Welcome to Bitch Talk Booze Interviews, straight from the heart of quarantine, everyone. I'm Erin. That's Ange. That's Shar. What's up? You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us every Monday morning at bff.fm from 6 to 6.30. Oh, yo, 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 yo. We have a special guest uh, that is uh, squad casting into the podcast uh, from L.A. Her name's Sandy Tan. She's the director of the film Shirkers, which is streaming now on Netflix. And uh, we had Sandy on uh, on the show late, late 2018, I think, uh, talking about Shirkers. She was on her... Um, her press tour talking about that film and we had a really good time with her at Max's Opera Cafe in San Francisco and um, she started following us on Instagram and uh, we follow her and I just ended up uh, Instagram messaging her and she was like yeah I'll be on the show and so she's on the show (laughs) so um, (laughs) why not yeah why not Uh, so uh, listen to our Uh, it's not really an interview it's just a chat really it's just a check in with one of our good friends Um, and uh, we'll see you on the other side so it's strange I see um, the two of you separately it's it's bizarre because I've you know when I met you you guys were like you know one thing (laughs) (laughs) joined at the hip yeah Yeah. I know well you know we're we're living in weird times, Sandy. We yeah, are. and I don't know. I mean, for us, our interview with you is very memorable. But do you remember that that afternoon? Yes, I did. At I do remember because we were um, completely insanely drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but you not. It's not often that our guests will partake with us, and if they do, you know, we don't force anybody, obviously. But you were definitely down right away you ordered I, I believe it was gin and tonics that you were you were drinking and then you ordered us calamari so we were like she's our best friend forever <laughs> i do think it was martinis but maybe it was gin and tonic because they didn't have any i don't know okay. we couldn't make martinis or something but yes calamari i remember distinctly um and that was that was fun yeah we we had such a good time with you and we we talk about you often and just wondering how you're doing and also um how was the ride of Shirkers? It was great. I can't remember if I met you during the, I guess it was during the crazy period, which is why I was like completely exhausted. Like I probably hadn't slept in days and I was like, you know, flying to New York and then to San Francisco and then, you know, I live in LA. So it's just been a, a mad jumble. Um, and I was just happy to sit down and, and just talk. And I guess it was maybe later in the cycle because by then I was... I was so exhausted. I was, I was being not so careful (laughs) and and I was saying things. um, And I think my, you know, the, the publicity people had already given up um, trying to (laughs) wrangle me by that point. And um, they just shrugged and just shook the heads and just whatever at this point. Well, you didn't spill any secrets with us. You you were perfect, and, and we really enjoyed you, obviously. So, thank you for being back. Uh, I I also wanted to ask, um, not only how how was the ride of Shirkers, but what does it feel like now to have this project that you started as a <laughs> teenager, right? And now is finally complete. What does it feel like to have that the weight of that project off your shoulders? Because um, we've it was, been it was it was great. The second that was done, it was over for me. Um, so that was that was great. And, um, and then went out into the world and, and then it just, you know, assumed a life of its own. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I keep hearing from all these, especially teenagers and teenagers at heart um, who just contact me and, and, and say that it means a lot to them and all these, you know, like around the world. Um, and I could not have imagined that this would be so. Um, but I'm, gr- I'm very grateful um, that it has happened. And actually, strangely enough, now that we're in this quarantine period, I keep hearing from these kids who are probably like should be doing their schoolwork at home, but I'm watching, watching shirkers and writing me, you know, letters and, and, you know, saying they're inspired and all this kind of stuff. And which is really nice, but they should be doing the homework. Maybe. <laughs> but, I, don't know. I mean, Maybe. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, but I, I, you know, tend to give them more, um, you know, very irresponsible advice. And for this, I apologize. <laughs> um, but, um, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'm, I'm not too irresponsible. 
Yeah, and I was um I was I was pleased to see that Shirkers was still streaming on Netflix. So I'm gonna have to put that back into my mm -hmm. queue during the pandemic because I loved that documentary yeah, it should, so it much. Be, it it should be there until mm -hmm. Netflix like shuts down <laughs> or something. <laughs> I mean, like who knows? It's you know, like I signed Not this contract soon. that says it's gonna be there forever. So as long as it exists, um, you know, it, it should be on there, I guess. Wow. And were you surprised by by how um, how impactful this film was when you went on your tour and and then kind of just uh, you know read all the reviews and 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 everything that happened during the release um, of that film? I try not to read reviews because it freaks me out. And, oh, and understandably, um, I know that people like mm -hmm. it, and you know whatever. And um, and the most meaningful thing is that kids are you know respond to it and you know, around the world. And, and I hear a lot from kids in Latin America, because I think they somehow maybe, I don't know, it's got this like great title in Spanish and Portuguese. Um, you know, it's like, the, um, it's like shirkers and the subtitle is the stolen picture or something. <laughs> and it's like really Ooh. like mysterious and exciting. <laughs> and so these kids wind up watching it. And I guess, the, um, you know, 90s Singapore looks a lot like, you know, like Brazil and and hmm. Argentina oh, places in Latin America and, and people tend to in Colombia and people tend to respond to it there um especially I mean I get letters from kids all over the place which is nice but I was surprised at how um it just you know meant a lot to people in those other places where they feel like maybe they're not in the in the cultural centers or you know cultural production centers of the world and yet you feel like you can do stuff you know and then that's what my intention was all along to make a film that, or, you know, to, to help have other kids who are like me back then feel like you can do something. Um, yeah. That's crazy to think of the impact that it's having right now, culturally, <clears throat> considering you started it decades ago. Imagine if it came out when you started it, you know, I, I mean, obviously these things happen for a reason, for a reason and the, and the timing happened the way it was meant to, but just the idea that it, it could have come out when you meant it to as a teenager and really you were paving the way for this was before there were such things as like in what's an independent film, you know, let alone from from a teenage girl. Yeah, I, you know, I try not to think about that too much, as I said then um, when I last spoke to you, because I think that. I really think that it would have been not a good film and it would have <laughs> discouraged us from pursuing film making or just, you know, wanting to dream of being storytellers even. And we might have all chosen different careers. Um, mm -hmm. But the fact that it didn't get completed became this like, you know, mythical quest that was unfulfilled and therefore it became more like something I had to keep like this thing that was bugging me for years and years, decades. And then this mystery I had to solve um, I think it would have been, you know, much less compelling if it come out then. And it was whatever, not a big deal. Um, and, you know, as I said, like it wouldn't have been a great film and all enemies who were laughing at us um, trying to make a film as teenagers uh, would have just, you know, like felt completely justified or something. And, and um, you know, we would have felt like losers. Oh, mm -hmm. um. You know, I, I was reading something you wrote. I think it was a couple of weeks ago for Talk House. Was that right? Um, oh, yeah. Just about what you're what you're watching and what you're reading. And um, I was reading that you this this time this pandemic is sort of sort of not. I don't want to say it's your jam, but you're also you're <laughs> you kind of you kind of are a hermit. So can you can you talk a little bit about <laughs> talk um, about this it's, this time it's a and place? Thing, but you know, like look, I'm the person who could make. Um, something positive out of this horrible thing that happened to me when I was a teenager, um, having lost a film and then, you know, kind of reconstructed something out of that and made it, you know, something. Um, so I tend to be, I guess, strangely optimistic when, when given lemons, I'll, I'll make very interesting lemonade maybe. Um, so <laughs> I, 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 um, I guess it's a survival tactic, um, something that I've always had to have, I guess. And so we're stuck here, you know, in isolation. And, and um, I, I just, I just feel like I've been so behind in life and, and not, you know, like I have this pile of books. Like, I think we all are, you know, like people live in our heads. Like we have a, a lot of things we want to write, a lot of things we want to read, a lot of things we want to do. And we just, you know, and this is a horrible thing that's happening in the world and I hate it. Um, 
But on the flip side, if um, we're, you know, given this chunk of time where, you know, it's like it's like a Twilight Zone episode where the world stops and you get to kind of catch up as long as you don't break your your eyeglasses. Your glasses. Yeah. Oh, my God. Twilight right. Zone. Kind of yeah. like that, you know, and um, we're one month in and I'm beginning to feel like I'm beginning. So, like, I'm a little later than most. I, I'm beginning to feel slightly antsy. Um, but you know, I'm still behind and I'm like writing, I just, you know, like all these things that not just the things that I'm supposed to be doing, um, but because you invariably, um, you're supposed to be, you know, working on the things you're supposed to be working on. And then, you know, ideas pop in your head and you just have to pursue them down their various rabbit holes. And that's what I did. So I'm, I'm like, you know, like outlining a new screenplay and, you know, things I shouldn't be doing, but somehow this is the time it's like, it's a special time. The rules don't apply. If you're going to pursue something that maybe would have no future, uh, we don't know what the world is going to be like when we get out of here. So why don't you just, you know, sit tight and just write it out and get it out of your system? Yeah. Um, Angela and I have been talking about the last um, two years. We've we've been lucky enough to go to Sundance and see a lot of film and, mm-hmm. you know, see see new directors and, and all that. And, and right now it's like thinking about next year Sundance what kind of films, what's going to be coming out of all of this? Or if, I don't know if Sundance will happen. It's, it's just, it's kind of a mystery right now. Yeah. Um, You know, maybe there'll be stuff that, I mean, I guess obviously, you know, things that have been shot or in the middle of shooting. Um, I'm supposed to be working on a, on a, on a show right now. And it's just been, you know, we're suspended uh, indefinitely until this thing ends. Cause I should be, I mean, I was supposed to be out shooting something so that's that's you know kind of disappointing, but at the same time, um, uh, you know, if you're healthy and and lucky enough to not be ill or in some kind of um, desperate situation, or you know, um, then you can sort of sort of try to make some positive thing out of this and just try to catch up with all the other things that you're so behind on, which I always feel I'm super behind on, and also like I I bought like books, like so I'm. You know, I finished some stuff I was going to read, and then now I'm, I am, um, I have to read Anthony and Cleopatra because Shakespeare wrote that during the bubonic plague, and uh, and oh, wow. you know, and and, um, and and that's a, um, a a play I've been meaning to read. I just never have, and so I thought, why not? You know, like this is the the time for why not, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and this concept of like how you say you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, you know, in, in quotations, like maybe you should be doing that. And, and I think that, you know, we're going to come out on the other end of this with a lot more clarity in terms of like, what was I spending my time on and what kind of what did it give back to me? You know, like we're really going to be focused on like what the things that we really missed and we really want to go back to and what things we really could put put by the side and they weren't as important in the first place, you know, yeah. in terms of like what we spend our time on. Yeah. Like I, I keep, you know, all these kids who write to me and I keep telling them now's the time to hatch those secret plans, like make those secret plans <laughs> and, and like, you know, device these crazy cockamamie schemes. And once you get out of here, it's like jailbreak, right? Once you're out of here, you can make <laughs> them happen. And, mm-hmm. you know, like you can be strong, you'd be stronger than ever. And you have, you're stronger than ever emotionally and psychologically because you've, you've actually, you have a secret plan that you can mm-hmm. unleash on the world. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, I wanted to See, ask, oh, go ahead, Ange. No, no, that's good. No, I was just going to say, that's great advice. You said you've been giving bad advice. That's excellent yeah. advice. <laughs> I want to hear some of this bad advice. <laughs> um, well, that's my, I mean, I don't know. I, I just use terms like that and, um, I, you know, hopefully that's, that's useful advice. Um, and it's just not necessarily, um, do your homework and listen to your mom. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. It's, it's more like, you know, this is the time to really, um, you know, build yourself up and, and, you know, hone your superhero self, you know, whatever it may be. So that once you get out of there, um, you can be more fully yourself. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this is like the secret time when you're like, it's like, you know, some boxing movie, like you're Rocky and you're just like, you know, like, <laughs> like, 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 you know, um, working with weights and, and, you know, pounding that, I don't know, that, that thing that you do when you're a boxer 
Um, the meat, the frozen side of beef. Whatever. But it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah. You know, this is like, think of it as a pause. I mean, we're all like trapped and, and feeling stir crazy. I think this is why kids are writing to me. Um, but, you know, like, like the positive side is, well, everyone's freaking out. Everyone who's more um, extroverted and used to socializing and having a thousand Zoom parties and dance parties and cocktail hours and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> which is not me, by the way. Um, people like us, this is the time you really just kind of, you become like some mad professor in your lair and you're building your secret time machine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to go it. that route. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I just, I, I have the question of, you know, after the whole Shirker Sings came out and you did get a lot of uh, different nominations and, and you, you ride that wave, what happens next? Because I think, you know, Angie and I do a lot of interviews with with filmmakers and, and we see these films um, ride the wave. And mm-hmm. then and then it's just like and then and then what do you do? <laughs> you just keep well, working I'm, or. Yeah, you keep working. I mean, the thing is, like, I you know, the, the thing about they don't tell you is that that year of promoting the film after it comes out is like a year of free work. So you just got to like line up work, you know, so that once oh. that mm. that year is over, you can hop on and, and just, you know, try to make a living. So um and also, you know, make your dreams come true. I mean, this is when people are taking you seriously. So if you'd be stupid not to take advantage of that. Um, um, so I'm actually, I don't know if you know this, but I'm ad- adapting The Idiot, um, not Dostoevsky's, but Elif Batuman's The Idiot, which was mm. a, a um, Pulitzer Prize winning, I mean, a Pulitzer Prize um, finalist uh, mm-hmm. from 2018 or something, 2017. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've been like... I was like, even when I was on tour with Shirkers, I was already kind of working on it. So that's something I can, you know, that I fully dive into. So I'm now like on my third draft or something and, and, you know, we're deeper, deep into it. And as well as other projects that have come along. So that's what's happening. And then, you know, and then you, and then you, you, you know, and then then this is kind of a nonfiction series that I'm, that's currently on hold um, because of this stupid thing that's going around. Um, mm-hmm. and so otherwise I'd be shooting right now. And so, you know, you just, life goes on. Um, yeah. And then other projects, of course, that, you know, that are just completely in the, um, discussion, discussion phase. And so therefore I wouldn't say it publicly yet. Yeah. Yeah. And I figured there's going to be some secrets that you, you couldn't share with us, yeah. but I'm always curious because we do this and then, you know, you see, you see where it goes and then, um, you know, you, you get to see what directors do next, but you don't know what's in the middle of that. So thanks no, for answering well, that. I mean, the, the thing is to, to keep um, yourself interested in momentum going and, and, you know, like, it's always like a miracle when anything gets made. Right. So um, mm-hmm. you just got to have like several things, you know, going and, and, you know, you have to work at all of them as if they were going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, you see, yeah. Well, well, and that's another thing that, you know, going to these film festivals, Sundance or, or whatever, or, <clears throat> or even a smaller one, is you see these amazing films and and oh, some of them don't get picked up. Like, you know, thankfully Shirkers is on Netflix. It's amazing, you know, until Netflix goes away, which will never happen. <laughs> but we see so many incredible films have these great conversations that just don't go anywhere. And it's yeah. really depressing. It is. It is. <laughs> and it's, it, really, and it's, like, it's really sad. It doesn't really have to do with quality at that point it's just luck who you meet I mean because you know there's so many great ones that just end up on the cutting room floor yeah yeah no it's it's um it's unfortunate but the thing is you know um if they have a good thing people will find it and it will be a good calling card and you know if you people will know it I mean there's there's just if you send it to people who are decision makers um I mean you know Oftentimes, um, you may, the first films of people may not be a big deal. They may not make a big sl- splash. They, they may not have a great distributor or something. But ultimately, they'll find their supporters and their champions. And then you finally, you know, suddenly they'll be popping out with their second film. It's like huger than, than someone's um, second film who had a big splashy debut. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, it, there's yeah. often that kind of trajectory as well. So there's not a clear path like you have to make a big splash at a film festival or, you know, get signed up somewhere or, you know, have a huge amount of money thrown at you. Um, 
publicly. I mean, a lot of these things happen behind the scenes too. You know, if you're not following, I mean, you don't know these people, you don't know what's going on in their lives and what's happening. And then suddenly this kind of unknown seeming person is doing some big thing uh, that's completely off our radar. So um, there's just so many avenues now that I, I, and also like, you know, there's so many ways of doing, telling stories. There's like amazing dramatic podcasts that then get picked up and turned to series like TV shows or something. And then there's also yeah. TV and there's, there's a whole bunch of different avenues that people can do, like that they can pursue now that they couldn't have done 15, 20 years ago. So I, I would say actually being an optimist, I think that's actually a much better playing field now that, you know, we have all these avenues and different um, streamers and places like that where, where, which are looking for, you know, content that uh, on the other side of it, you, you often see lots of not very good people getting um, yes. to write shows and, mm -hmm. and, and, and do stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, 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 it all evens out, you know, it's um, a lot of it's luck, but it's a lot of it is um, it's less luck now, I think than it used to be because people now can, you know, get their work seen and you can knock on doors of people that you don't know anymore. And in the old days you have to know them. Right. Or you have to be able to be lucky enough to encounter them or something. But now there's like the internet, you can like reach out to people by Instagram or whatever. And there's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but there's like, there's ways of getting, you know, hold of people that didn't, yeah. didn't used to be. So um, I would like mm -hmm. for young people to feel more empowered by this because I think it's mm -hmm. true. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I, I've been um, talking with Ange and then our producer um, who's who's on the, on this call as well, I think. Um, but just this was like what you're saying. Um, this is the time of why not. And I've just been reaching out to people on Instagram because why not? Um, yeah. There's they're also sitting at home twiddling their thumbs, I think. So this um, is the best time to, to trick people into Zoom calls. <laughs> 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 well, I, I don't want to take any more of your uh, guacamole time, uh, Sandy, because that looked really good what you were eating. So um, <laughs> I want to thank you for hopping on uh, with us uh, on, on Bitch Talk once again. And yeah, what, um, what are you guys doing, by the way? Because like it's a one way. I mean, it was so rude of me to not have asked. Like, how are you guys doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ange, you go first. <laughs> we'll, we'll need another 20 minutes for that, Sandy. No, I'm just kidding. You know, uh, ju just like what you said, um, we we have a project that we've been working on, a documentary that we've been working on since uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time basically since we started that I've had just literally no other distractions. That's great. So I'm, I'm editing it. I'm, I'm in post right now with that wow, documentary. Oh, congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah. And and it's, it's crazy because I literally don't have any distractions, you know, whether I like it or not. Yeah. So, no, it's perfect. Um, I'm, you see, I'm really I, I think it's actually great for, for creative people. And I, I keep telling all these kids, like now's the time, you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. this is like the, the why not time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and you don't realize how many distractions you have until all of a sudden you don't, you know? So um, I just feel super grateful that I have that to occupy my time and, and just kind of keep me focused. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I'm, I'm just trucking along and helping Ange and, and, uh, and working on the podcast. So, um, you know, we've been releasing three episodes a week and, um, just more people are listening because they don't have anything else to do, which is great. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just, we're just coming up with content and, and yeah, that's what and we're keeping doing. people sane by making them talk to you because they haven't talked to anybody in a while. Yeah, we're, we're, finding, we're finding that to be true, actually. So, yeah. Well, and honestly, Sandy, I would love for us to talk to you more often. We need your dose of positivity. I think everybody does. And thank you for sending sure, out that, anytime. sending out just that, that outlook. I think it is really important because, um, you know, it's, it's easy to forget that uh, things are obviously very hard, but we're also very lucky. Yeah, we yeah. all be are. in our situations. So. Yeah, we are, and I can see you're yeah. healthy and alive. I mean, basically, <laughs> the, the 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 I guess the the functional uh, the, the the most useful thing is being alive. You know, as long yeah. as you're alive, it's all good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have your health. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, Sandy, we we seriously we love you so much, and um, mm -hmm. we just we really appreciate you. So thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.
That was our conversation with the incredible Sandy Tan, director of the documentary Shirkers, which will be on Netflix until the end of time, apparently. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Sandy. Uh, do yourself a favor, watch this documentary and yep. reach out to her. Clearly, she responds to people that yes. write in uh, with some excellent advice. So thank you so much, Sandy. We love you. Don't forget to check us out on our brand spanking new website, fishtalkpodcast.com. Uh, you can also find us every Monday morning at bff.fm from 6 to 630. Oy, 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 oy. We're powered by GoTo Productions. Bitch, please. <laughs>